So, folks, after about six hours, His Excellency, he can help in the President process. Joseph Nyoma Mpwaka, just concluded his third cabinet meeting with schools of government officials here at the grounds of the Executive Marshal. This is Spoon TV with me, Sylvester Chiropoli. So we have the Presidential Press Secretary, Mana Kula Fofana. We also have the information minister. We would yes, love to uh, uh, take a few words from them and to know exactly uh, what was the the third meeting all about. So, so let's talk to uh, the presidential press secretary. Uh, a welcome to Spoon TV and other media institutions. You just uh, concluded with the third. Um, meeting, cabinet meeting, uh, convened by His Excellency uh, President Joseph Nyoman Buaka. Uh, tell us exactly what was discussed, the aim of the meeting. Well, first of all, thank you all very much. Um, you all are such strong individuals. I didn't know you were still here since this morning. As you know, I'm sure you've been reporting that the third cabinet meeting started since this morning, mm -hmm. and we've been here the entire day. I can tell you, um, you just saw the president pass to go back to the office. It's been a full agenda. Um, it's been a very active day um, where the president had his cabinet meeting, meeting with his cabinet ministers. Um, they gave him briefing on the different updates where they stand when it comes to the 100 day, the first 100 day deliverables um, and they also talk a lot of different range of issues in all the different sectors those that were on the agenda as, as um, we've been here all day and and I mean the president definitely looked forward to uh, more updates from his ministers um, and uh, some of the conversations centered around food security, Ministry of Agriculture, for example, talk about where we stand um, on our issues of rice, Ministry of Commerce as well. We also had uh, the Ministry of Mines and Energy talking about the issues of electricity. You remember uh, very recently there was a roundtable electricity sector meeting held, some updates around that, where we are, um, and, and a range of uh, issues culminating into things that have been happening um, specifically on the agenda. So it was a full agenda, a full day um, on everything happening okay. in, in the country. Okay. So uh, the, the, the last time the uh, second uh, cabinet meeting uh, was about the 100 day deliverables. And uh, today, um, uh, tell us exactly, uh, we have gone 72 uh, days out of the 100 days. So where are we in terms of the um, the promises uh, His Excellency President Joseph Joseph Baca made during campaigning? For example, uh, you will not have uh, any car being stuck in major roads in Liberia. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure uh, some of these points were mentioned. So. Well, what absolutely, we say? absolutely. So, um, as you know, as, as you've rightly put it, the 100-day deliverable plan is is in place. Um, things that were already in motion, they are continuing to be in motion. But the little challenge is that you know the budget is yet to be passed by the national legislature. And as you know, the president did invite the national legislature to resume work. You know, call them back from the agriculture or constituency break. Um, and then they are now debating the budget. We hope that very soon they're able to pass it so that those other things that required budgetary um, allocations and financial um, uh, support will be taken care of. So yes, it's on course. Um, road work, preliminary works on a lot of different things are in motion. We're, we're only looking for that signage of the budget into law and you will see a lot more happening. But the president, um, his 100-day deliverable, he's never changed. Even we emphasize that today, that he's very serious about it. Okay, so uh, besides um, uh, the president talking about the, the energy sector, uh, like you just said, um, there are other um, concern national issues uh, may have been discussed there. Uh, for example, the issue of uh, fire disasters all around the world, uh, the country. Uh, did you talk about it? Uh, I mean, did you really, you know, fact, focus on that? In fact, it's not just only fire disaster. 
was also we also talked about uh, general disasters that are happening interestingly you didn't see the vice president here today in this cabinet meeting because on yesterday evening he did send the uh, vice president to go to rivers where the most life um, has happened and about what we've been told about 11 person um, lost their lives and he's uh, extend sympathy to the families um, of those citizens who lost their lives and he've sent the vice president there to go and intervene and, and speak with the victims and their families i mean speak with the families and see what form of more intervention can be done so yes so disaster is definitely part of the agenda um, so fire is also part of it and all these different things that are happening in the country is very much concerned about those and specific actions we're taking particularly with those line agencies that are involved particularly for example the fire service and national fire service uh, was also highlighted among some of the things that needs to be done as well as the national disaster management <laughs> Yeah, so for my end, my name is Basta. I work with EOPC. So, um, like my colleague said, uh, the, the issue of electricity and another uh, crucial part. So when the bill, when the, the budget is passed, what are some of the crucial places or uh, our sectors you think the, the president, uh, I think the, 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 the government needs to focus when the budget is passed? Oh, absolutely. They're, so the key priorities of the government, of obviously the 100-day deliverable, particularly in the areas of uh, road network and electricity, electricity and roads are top on the list of, of priorities, as well as other sectors like uh, agriculture and education. In fact, the Minister of Education just recently uh, visited the southeast and she came back to the to the uh, to the city and briefed the president on some of the challenges that you've seen i mean you you will you will be it will interest you to know that how challenging you know the education sector is especially in far to reach places and how students come from very difficult uh, distances to go to school so all of those you know are part of the reform process that the government is putting in place and the president is very excited about what his team is willing and ready to do. So uh, just last day from my end, um, we saw several ministers you know, from different ministries. Uh, for example, we saw Commerce Minister, you know, Les My Energy, the Information Minister, even the Finance Minister, the Foreign Affairs Minister, right? Um, is there any uh, specific mandate uh, given uh, to those ministers from the president? Oh, absolutely. In fact, the president has been very clear on firstly documenting what each of these ministers have met and telling their stories and giving updates to the public. He encourages uh, the, the ministers to be able to update the public regularly on what they're doing. Um, one of examples I will give, one of the examples will be on the uh, General Services Agency, that's one, as well as the CSA, the Civil Service Agency. Also, for example, you will see recently the Civil Service across line agencies, the issue of personnel, even here at the Ministry of State. Um, and personnel has been one of the issues across agencies where there are more people. So civil service agency is doing this uh, comprehensive process in reviewing all the entire listing um, in terms of people who are considered, you know, sub on supplementary payroll, people who are in the civil service. Because at the end of the day, you want to be able to have people earn what they work for. You want to be able to have a workforce that's really working and not just have people lingering at different agencies that they do not, they're not using what their potential can be. Um, and that is one of the things that the president was very clear to all of his ministers that document what you met, do what you need to do because the Liberian people are looking up to all of you, particularly him, you know, because he is the leader of this ship and he encourages them to do their work as he always told them. This is this is really this is really good. Uh, but uh, let, let's talk about the recent you know, action uh, that took place here at the grounds of the executive mansion. All right, at uh, the Ministry of State. Did he talk about it? And also the issue of the asset recovery uh, tax for team. Uh, we understand that this matter, you know, has gone to court. Uh, what did he say about all of these issues? Well, he did tell the the tax force to be meticulous in the work, and he showed that they followed the, the house arbitrary action that they're able to do because at the end of the day as they were reporting that even GSA do not have any assets at the moment you know so it, it, it means that and they've been receiving tip off on where these you know things that former government officials have kept in places so the president encouraged them to use you know the law use the procedure properly so that these things can be 
fully accounted for and probably returned to the government. Um, and, 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 and he's very clear on, on those. He's very, very clear. The only issue of that happened here um, last week is that it's again on similar personnel issue. There, there were over 700 personnel that were on supplementary payroll, and the government does not have any resources to cater for the supplementary payroll. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an empathetic thing because regardless, I mean, Liberians are Liberians. People who are working, everyone, and he empathize with everyone. You know, he even mentioned that Liberians, people who are working, who didn't come to the force or to the service the right way um, and they are on supplementary period, they all have parents, they all have families to feed. But the right thing must be done. And I mean, as he always said, this is not going to be business as usual. When you come to work for government, government must be able to pay you. If government can pay you, government needs to tell you so that, you know, they can, you know, ensure that you get paid for the work you've done in the past, but not keep you if they, if, if they cannot use your services or they do not have resources to pay you. So lastly, uh, when do we expect another cabinet meeting? So the cabinet, the way it is uh, structured, there will be from time to time. And uh, what I do know from His Excellency the President, he's really, because as you know, this is like the uh, second, going to the third month of the government. Um, and, you know, he's had the third meeting. This is the third one. And he will call cabinet meeting as much as he likes to get updates. And, you know, the government will be turning 100 days soon. So you will you will probably see another cabinet meeting soon or a, 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 a briefing so the public about where the country is in the first 100 days and what the country is looking forward to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you also, so uh, Madam Kula Fofana is the presidential press secretary, just briefing us after the third cabinet meeting uh, convened by His Excellency President Joseph Nyoman Puaka here at the grounds of the executive mansion. Thanks so very kindly, folks, for watching. So, let's talk to you, is my name.